Here's normal. You probably recognize that, right? Yeah. A little bit of breathing. It's making me nervous. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> yeah. Somebody called the campus and said, we're looking for some young student interested in sound who can come and work on this film called The Star Wars. We, we just need someone who's, well, they didn't say so, cheap. And so I was recommended for that, you know, as a possible candidate for that job. And, uh, and so I went out to the studio and got an interview with them on Star Wars, and I got the job. That artwork on that screen, that was what was on the wall in their office. And I looked at that and I said, wow, I, I made this film when I was 14, you know, our version of it, so I'm cut out for this job. Uh, I never looked uh, at my interests in movies as a career. I I'd never considered it. But I had many hobbies. I was interested in photography. I was interested in music. I played the drums. As a teen, I started making uh, movies with my friends. Didn't want to grow up, and I found that going into movies was one way of not growing up, that I could still have fun putting on costumes and acting out stories and this sort of thing. In my senior year in college, uh, I had a guest come to the school. It was a man named Arthur C. Clarke. He was the uh, co-author of the script 2001 Space Odyssey, the movie. And I started asking him questions about his career and how he got to where he was. And I was just totally inspired by this because here I saw a man who could combine his interest in science and science fiction. After I graduated from, from school, I came home and I had uh, two years, a uh, year and a half really spent going nowhere. But I, I persisted and I, I finished a couple uh, amateur films, which I was, had been working on, and I started entering them into contests around the country. They had student contests, and I won uh, two national awards for films I made. One of the films came with a scholarship money if I wanted to apply it toward education. I applied to USC Cinema in Los Angeles and got accepted there. And I was there for about 10 days. I finally rented an apartment and uh, registration was about ready to start and I, I chickened out. And I got on a plane and I came home. And I remember going back to my house and uh, we drove into the garage and as the automatic garage door went down closing and I'm standing on the inside, you know, I thought my whole world had ended because there was this door closing clunk. I was back in my house, in my bedroom where I grew up. The folks at USC uh, said I could still come back and start another semester. I still, they'd hold it open for me. And um, thought about it for some months and uh, got the courage up and went back. It took me a second attempt to do that. I mean, part of it was just leaving what was familiar behind. So once again, you just build your a new life a piece at a time in a new place. And, Eventually, it, it all became, you know, comfortable and secure. Uh, that definitely resonates with me, uh, maybe all of us, but in particular, like, Rhode Island is so small and tight-knit. Yeah. It's hard to step out. Yeah. And, like, I feel that uncertainty and that fear, mm -hmm. and then you just freeze up. And yeah, that was what was it, was there any one thing that motivated you to finally get in the car and go? I needed a place to plant my imagination that it could grow. And, and, and the opportunities before me, uh, and what was I, 22, I think, at the time, 22 or 23. I just didn't have a, a feeling that they, they were, they were going to grow. You said that you were in this place where we're at right now. Yeah. So how did you get to sure. sitting at Skywalker Here. Ranch, like doing what you uh -huh. love every day? I found that my interest in sound was something that was different from most students that were there. And I began helping other students with sound in their film. And I found all these films I had listened to all my life, all that information started becoming useful to me. All these little things suddenly were gathered together and focused into a structure which, you know, you, filmmaking is a wonderful blend of all these liberal arts together. I have used every course that I ever took in some way in the work that I've done over the years. And my recommendation for for anyone uh, going into performing arts is to have a broad background as you can get. You know, I don't sort of focus too early. You want to bring something original to it, and the only way you'll get that is to study other fields. It was not an easy road for me. Uh, there were times when I thought it was going nowhere, and it wasn't. How was your experience with um, presenting 
you know, your creative work to audiences or just to other people, Ben. I know I personally struggle with, you know, in any sort of creative work that I do with, with really putting it out there because you really are really vulnerable. Yeah, sure. When you, yeah, when you right. kind of um, do that. I'm curious what your experience with, well, with that has been. You have to get used to a lot of rejection. It's very hard for me at first to realize that no matter how good something you think it is, and it might be great for some people, you've got to sell it to particular people who have a certain taste. I always find that hard. The advice I would give to anyone is, um, even someone like me makes things every day that get thrown away. It just happens. Um, there's a library of sound in my computer, and it's, there's lots and lots of things in there that I loved and someone did not. I remember I was hired once a long time ago to make a sound for the movie Alien, and they wanted a, a, a very particular sound of a transmission uh, of an alien uh, warning signal. And I worked uh, trying to make that homing beacon sound. I tried lots of different things, and I could not sell one to the director. And eventually, he took it out of the movie. There was nothing in the movie. Um, and I felt terrible, I just failed. But I took one of those sounds later and used it in um, Raiders of the Lost Ark for ghosts coming up out of the Ark of the Covenant, and I got an Academy Award. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it was the same sound. You, you get caught in a world in which procrastination becomes an obstacle because I think some of the best things we've ever done, in my opinion, were actually done pretty quickly and instinctively. Having sharp, creative ideas is actually very important. Having too much time and too many resources is not a good thing. It's good to have limitations. Forces you to have a sharp, sharpen your creative goal. What am I actually trying to do? What is important here? I think in all the performing arts, uh, whatever you do at a given moment is a summation of many, many things that have been inputted into your life. Suddenly, in your unique way, you put a bunch of parts together from all these experiences you've had and you express yourself. And that's exciting. And I think you recognize those moments when they happen. You don't want to overthink it sometimes. You know? What advice would you give to people kind of in our age sure. and you know you mentioned that you really had experienced this kind of flux time yeah. with a lot of decisions before us kind of thing um, just what advice would you give to us in I think it's very important to get a broadest education that you can uh, early on in other words expose yourself to new things because you I have found that ultimately by the time you've lived to be 65 I've drawn on all that experience. I think it's very important to complete things. The act of completing something trains you. Whatever creativity you have within you is fine, but it's no good unless you can actually finish a task. You know, even during those times where you just feel like you're getting nowhere. I didn't like that. I didn't like being stuck somewhere. But I think it's part of a passage that is likely to happen to everybody at some point.